it. There's a car you can poop in. It's a car you can poop in. It's a car you can poop in. Oh, say la fee. It's relatively leak free. Smells like grandma and puffed weed. This RV, it's a Tropical RV. This is a 2004 National RV Tropical Freightliner chassis. I wasn't lying when I gave you the hints. Rear wheel drive, rear engine, six cylinder with a turbo. Diesel. Rated 350 horse, 870 foot pounds of torque, I think. This is 40 feet long. It's the size of a coach bus because it is a coach bus. It's bigger than student debt. I did my best to research RVs for this one, but my volunteers for today are going to do a good bit of talking because they can explain this thing way better than I can because they've lived in it. These are all the six volt golf cart batteries for the house power basically. Are those the batteries that start the yes, engine? Yes, okay. the, the considered the chassis batteries, or engine, lights, uh, air conditioning. <laughs> and the next door is the front. It was like your poop bucket door. Where's your, uh... yeah. Right up here, oh, yeah. you've got an inlet. This is where you would hook up like your, from, your water hose or something like that from the campground. Mm -hmm. And that would, you turn this, now it would just go straight to the pump or straight to tank and you'd let the pump do the pressurized water and mm -hmm. move and all that stuff. But it would feed off of here. Or if you leave it all alone, there's a valve in there that hooks down to that hose and fills up the 100 gallon fresh water tank. Right. And of course, here's, you know, just to wash your stuff and hand okay. soap. Because here is gray water, which would be the sinks and the shower. Mm -hmm. And then your black water would be the toilet. Okay. And so that's basically, the poop. that's the poop. Mm -hmm. You pull that one out first, because the hoses are in here. Um, pull that one out first, kind of let it all flush mm -hmm. out, and then you do this, and it'll flush, hopefully flush all the dirty stuff out of the hose, mm. and the hose will be somewhat clean. Put it all back together, and then bam, poop's done. <laughs> <laughs> Water pump. I don't know if it's turned on or cats. Oh, you let it run for a little bit. And then the pump should turn on. Yep. <laughs> and the hot water gets that that back corner, that back corner panel where you pictured. That's mm -hmm. the water heater back okay. there. And then the the small squares, the uh, the furnaces. It's got two for each section. Furnace. Yep. Propane furnace. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Actually, does a very good job. It um, does. I'm surprised. We haven't really. <laughs> and it doesn't burn that much propane either. Poop. So that's the poop hose. Yeah, that's the poop hose. <laughs> and the dump. So you don't have to set it up, but I gather it just goes right in there. Yep. And then you turn the lever, and then you make sure to stay well away. The, uh, yeah. You make sure everything's screwed in together, and it's going to stay relatively leak free. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the, the shit snake. <laughs> the shit snake. <laughs> and then the rest is just storage, like a the rest, bus. The rest is just storage. All our random crap in here. Yeah. But the the thing we really like about this one is that it's like a, a Greyhound bus where it passes all the way through. Oh, to the other. Some RVs like that one right there more than likely would just be a compartment. Mm. So you couldn't stick like lawn chairs in the long way. Mm -hmm. So it passes all the way through. Uh, the only issue we have really is when the slides are out, you can only have them out that high. Okay. And then you bump your head and all that. We generally say. Or tell each other, I have, Frisco's my youngest brother, I've got two older. Mm -hmm. They are just like, don't take a dump in the RV. <laughs> that's the rules. Mm. Propane. Uh, what, what am I smelling? Oh, uh, mothballs. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, it was a nostalgic <laughs> smell. <laughs> just like grandma's. <laughs> Smells like fun. grandma. <laughs> Basically, that's hooked straight to those bank of batteries over there. Mm -hmm. It converts it to 120. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it gets an AC input, you know, hook it up to land shore or yeah. land power or from the generator, it'll turn around and charge the batteries. Huh. Okay. So 
we had that thing go out and it was a giant pain because oh no nothing works now <laughs> but when you pull it up and you're done you grab this you hit down on the pedal and then you oh. wash your troubles away so you gotta look look at your own crap yes yeah, so you gotta <laughs> make you gotta make sure you're clean after <laughs> it's not a bodet but it's close right <laughs> 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 this goes way beyond transportation. Like it or not, an RV is a symbol of affluence. Ten lugs hold the wheel on. And it does have a sports exhaust. So before you start driving, there are things to do. You have to shut down the propane generator that runs independently of the diesel motor in the back that drives the RV. The airbag suspension, because of course it has airbag suspension, has these go-go gadget legs, which you have to pull back up. And if you are parked somewhere for a long time, odds are you did this. <laughs> So you have to go back to the engineering panel where you can call yourself Geordie LaForge and prepare for warp drive. Is this not extravagant for you yet? Okay, you just don't turn the key on an RV. Here's how you start an RV this size. It's gonna take a while. Oh, this is, oh boy. I am driving your home. No pressure. No pressure at all. Okay. It is a I am 40 seat. feet long? You are, yeah. Might as well be. 39.9, I think. Stay under some sort of limb that they have or whatever. For a single text. Right, but I can't just turn left. I have to go forward for a while. Yeah. And then turn. Yeah. Your mirror, I, uh, of course, you got power mirrors, you can adjust them, whichever. The top. The big section to however you like them mm -hmm. um but the ones i mainly use are the small ones on the bottom that gives you a pretty good you know who's beside you what's going on uh sort of uh view for the mirrors okay the ones are, you know, of course more focused or whatever so all righty there are a lot of trucks moving around here pause it right here i had this unearthly feeling of being an interloper I'm parked with all the semi-trucks and all the semi-truck drivers and look and there they go. Can they feel me? In a very Samuel Hines way, can they feel me in their lives? Do they know there's someone here who isn't one of us? Can they smell me? And I have to get in line with them and leave. I have to look like I know what I'm doing. Okay, there is no gear shift. I select it with these push buttons yep, here. push buttons. Uh, uh, R and D. Yep. So I have D. I just press D. Just press D and it's good. Air brakes. Have you ever driven air brakes before? No, sir, I have not. They are so much fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're, uh, it's air drums all the way around, which is the way they've been doing it for millions of years. So, um. Okay, I press the D. You need to start it first. Okay, that buzzing is the generator. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. And all these lights come on? Yep. This turns on. That's the uh, yeah, your HVAC, and then you've got your uh, headlight switch over there in the left top corner. Okay, headlights on. Yep. Wow, all the lights come on mm -hmm. like a like a normal car. Okay. So one thing about the throttle, it's got a it's not very linear at all. It, the first ten percent, or the I guess the first five percent is giving the engine is giving like ten percent. So it's like feet in just a little bit it goes, Ugh. yeah it's really annoying especially when you're trying to be quiet to park you know park or something like that mm -hmm. but um after that it's, it's pretty linear okay it looks like no one's moving around right now all right so you're gonna so press gonna... the yellow knob that releases your park brake yellow knob or the pale yellow knob you okay push it down push it down yep all right all right you're gonna push d push and d and then you want to hit that mode button which okay. is economy that makes it shift a little bit earlier. Okay. And um, economy in one of these, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. But, so now I can, is this gonna creep? Oh, it does creep. Yeah, it'll creep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Those are air brakes. So <laughs> now I. You're gonna wanna go ahead and start turning a little start bit. Start turning now. I double parked specifically that way you can, you know, get a feel for, you know. Okay. The steering is, is, is Immediately is I am feel. starting to sweat. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can give it a little bit more gas. Oh yeah. Okay. You feel how it just. Yeah, it lurches. Yeah. And you can go all the way down. And it's just like, mm, okay. Of course, turbo spools a little bit slow, but I mean, if you need to get out, 
you just you know left brake and just hold the throttle, boost it. <laughs> oh, brake stand. Oh yes, it'll do a it won't do a brake stand, but it'll spool up and get going. It's interesting that the the turn signals don't go click 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 click. Yeah, it's like every certain it's yeah. Lumbers left and right. Yes, it does. I don't see a sign telling me to wait for other people, nope. so I'm just going to cruise on You've through got this. Bigger tires. Okay, That's where's the radio? Radio? Is right no, I mean oh, your radio. radio. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's just cheesing. And this is a, a smooth uh, transition onto the road. Okay, stopping, stopping, either, stopping. Either Coming to a complete stop and going. Oh, coming out in the intersection, but then I have, there's nothing in front of me so I can cut yep, right over. Exactly. Now, we don't have this, we have the next one. I'm gonna give it a little bit more go juice. And your entire Christmas dinner is moving around. <laughs> Here I go, job. alrighty. So you'll be pulling a hill. Okay. So if you're comfortable enough, just hold it to the floor and just let her do her thing. All right. I'm pressing it down. Oh, yeah. I'm going 35. I hear everything in the cabinets moving around. Here comes a Jeep. And your lifted Jeep, you're tiny. Oh, yeah. My foot is completely on the floor now. Yep. That's all you get. All righty. On flat ground. Yep. Which, I mean, if I don't need to talk, just let me know. Thank you concentrate but you're doing great though thank you and so it's going steering. we're going 50 miles an hour it is slowly accelerating yep. up going to 65 up, up the hills and all that stuff your blinkers on <laughs> As I learned more about this car, I learned that this is a car that lets you bang standing up. I feel like I'm sitting inside John Goodman. You can climb up to the roof for climatic fistfights. It takes a half an hour to fill these tanks up with diesel fuel. A half an hour. It's a car for showing up on Wednesday for the Sunday tailgate. It has direct TV because this isn't the Middle Ages, and if I want to ignore the wife and watch the game, roll tight! I should be able to do it on the road. For families packed into Chevy Malibus or Honda Odysseys, this is the dream. And also the enemy, because they can't front on you when side by side. This RV is the final boss of family vacation. Try and make my life. The engine. It runs on a 7 liter V6 diesel engine, which means each cylinder is about 1,100 cubic centimeters. You can do everything. Put your feet up, watch TV, cook up pierogies, drop a hot deuce, drop a hot thrice. It's a car with an IMAX windshield and a college radio switchboard with big ass wheel attached. It's so big you have to clear it with mission control first. Hell, this thing is so monolithic, the scientists from 2001 are still trying to figure out what this thing is and why it's here. It's daunting. If you've never driven something like this before, it ends up being terrifying instead of fun. You can feel the weight of responsibility heavy like white man's burden. Too soon? It's like being in the final level of Legends of the Hidden Temple. Like, yeah, you're supposed to be having fun, but I have no pendants of life, and I'm pretty sure if I pull this switch, a Mayan temple guard is gonna jump out and pull me into his touch, touch cave for touch this is a rolling megachurch to the monotheism of the traveler. There is no God but the open road. And it's good to have an RV because even in a recession, the RV bubble won't burst. I hear ya. Why would anybody need something like this? That's what all my relatives asked when I told them I drove an RV, a 40-footer. They asked me, why would anybody ever need that? Here's why. Here's what you need to know about RVs, especially big ones like this Freightliner-based Tropical. You don't buy an RV for yourself. You don't buy an RV for yourself. Say that again. You do not buy an RV for yourself. You buy it for everybody else. Think about it. Your buddies come up and say, yo, we're going on a road trip to Montana. And you think, that is four days in a Nissan Murano or a Ford Excursion if we're lucky. So you say, I don't think I'll be able to get off work. Oh, no, man. No. 
We got an RV. Oh, hell yeah. Because that means road wine. Think about it. Long road trip in a passenger car. Everybody hates each other just a little bit when the trip is over. Not in an RV. You have space. You have a home. You have a ship. This is our ship. Damn it, I'll call it the Bebop if I want. <laughs> Sweet, 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 mobile, sweet, sweet.